Good morning and welcome back to class. Um, we want to go ahead and take some time to go through our unit on thermochemistry. Now, you will be able to follow along with this with your guided notes and fill in the information as needed. So if you're absent, make sure you go back. If you need to rewind a couple of times to make sure you have all the information, that is fine. But let's go ahead and kick it off with our learning goals for this part of the unit. Students will be able to recall and explain the law of conservation of energy, differentiate between types of energy, differentiate, differentiate between endothermic and exothermic reactions, and also identify the units. Now, most of these things, which you're going to notice, correspond to what is on your scale. So you also want to go back and make sure you have the information correct according to your scale. Now, law of conservation of energy. This was given to us by Antoine Lavoisier. <coughs> now, in, earlier in the year, we covered the law of conservation of matter, which said matter cannot be created or destroyed, um, but it's just transferred. It goes from one form to another. We're going to look at this, and it's the same exact idea for the law of conservation of energy. All we did is really change out one word. Energy is not created or destroyed in a chemical reaction. It's just transferred from one form to another. So even as we look at the picture of the lava that's flowing from the volcano, it may have started off as a chemical reaction. It's being given off. It's giving off light energy. It's giving off heat energy. But it all started from one location. It did not disappear or anything like that. It's now just in a different form. And this is very, this is very important as we continue to go through because we'll look at the different types of energy that we're going to use. Now, the first two types of energy, the main two types of energy that we always talk about are potential energy and kinetic energy. Potential energy, of course, being stored energy. It's just sitting there. It's waiting to be used. Whereas kinetic energy is going to be our energy of motion, the ability to um, utilize the mass of something and the velocity at which it's moving to determine how much energy is there. We end up focusing most of our time on chemical potential energy or the energy that is stored in chemical bonds. This is going to be the most important. So as we go through, you may start get to get a picture in your head of um, two atoms or two balls as they're connected, what happens to them as heat is added, as heat is taken away, those type of things. Now, the major forms of energy, and this is to go right there in that first block for you, um, that we're going to deal with, thermal, there's electrical, mechanical, radiation, sound, there's also light, and as we spoke about on the previous slide, we're going to take some time to look at chemical energy as well. Now, you'll have transition between all of these different forms of energy at any given time. So don't think that once it's in one form that that's it. It'll be released in different ways. As we look at energy and as we look at these reactions, we have to determine a couple of things. And we have to do this rather quickly. We have to determine what is the system and what are the surroundings. The system is going to be the exact thing that we're actually taking the time to focus on. So if you're thinking back to the activity we did, the station lab, you notice that station one, we did a reaction with sodium bicarbonate and citric acid. When we mix those two things, those two chemicals, that is now our system. The surroundings then become everything else. It becomes the beaker, the thermometer that you're using. If you're holding the beaker in hand, it, it becomes, your hand becomes a part of the system. These are all things that we can use to sort of explain what's going on with that system and that system alone. Now, energy, as we said, is constantly moving back and forth. And there are two ways that we'll usually explain this. We'll look at whether it's endothermic or energy is being absorbed by the system, or whether it's exothermic, um, where energy is being released. As we take our time to look at this, this goes back to the lab activity that we did. Think about the definitions that we put out there, that if it's an endothermic reaction because the system is pulling in heat, or pulling, yeah, pulling in energy, it's going to feel cold because it's going to steal away the energy from your hand. Whereas in exothermic reactions where the heat is actually leaving, so it's going to feel warmer to the touch. Just keep these in mind as we continue to go on because we're going to continue to make correlations to them. Now, <clears throat> specific heat. Specific heat is the amount of energy needed to raise one gram of a substance one degree Celsius. So this would be actually a set amount or a set value um, that's determined 
for each element or each compound that may be used. Given a formula that we'll use, we'll use this a couple times. We may not do a whole lot of calculations with it, but um, it's good to have in mind and know what each part is at least. Um, it's going to be C, lowercase c, equals Q, which is the amount of heat in kilojoules, divided by the mass times the change in temperature. This is what we're going to use to be able to calculate the specific heat. But just like this, you want to keep in mind that if we have three out of the four, we can always calculate the one that is missing. Now, the next part that comes in is now we have what's called the heat capacity, which is the amount of energy needed to raise the temperature of an object one degree Celsius. What's the main difference here? The specific heat is a set value and has been calculated over time for each individual element or compound, whereas the heat capacity may depend on the size, depend on the material. If it is something that is a metal, it may have a higher heat capacity, whereas something that is a non-metal may have a much lower heat capacity. So you want to keep these in mind as we continue to go through. Now, the main unit that we'll utilize in this is the joule. That's going to be the SI unit, an international unit that's used to measure energy. This is our key unit. Every once in a while, you'll see also that the calorie is introduced into it. Um, now, this is a different calorie than what most people are probably thinking. Most people are saying, hey, my food has this many calories. Oh, wow, it's, this is the direct correlation. But the nutritional calories are actually um, set up on a different scale. Everything is still balanced out, but it's set up on a slightly different scale, and we'll explain that as different um, as the days go by. Now, at this point, we've completed all the information for Section 1. Go ahead and take some time, <clears throat> and we'll get into Section 2 in the next video. Have a great evening. Make sure you write down any questions you have for me in class. Have a great day.